Students, good morning. Let us start the discussion on today's newspaper. That is 20th March 2018. The first article is to be fighting fit. The centrality of this article is to modernize our armed forces and to make our war machine fit for fight. So in this scenario, there are two arguments naturally comes up. Do we need to spend more money on weapons or feeding millions of hungry people in the country? So the development is pitched against military modernization. The pacifists and developmentalists always favor for, uh, for feeding the millions rather than going for military equipment. So, let us see two examples over here. Japan, though it was the second largest economy in the 60s and 70s, it was failed to be recognized as a superpower because it was not militarily stronger. And second, it means that if you are though wealthy, if you do not have the military power, you cannot claim your respect among the committee of nations. Second, you have the military power, but you are not prosperous enough to feed your millions. That also questions your sovereignty. So food sovereignty is also important part of our sovereignty claim. To claim for superpower. So the China is able to claim for superpower status for the reason that um, it is both able to feed its millions and able to build a war machine. So efficient war machine, what does that mean? Today, if you observe China, it is modernizing its war machine not through increasing the numbers and budget uh, numbers and just with budget allocations. It is actually modernizing through technology. So robotic, artificial intelligence, autonomous systems, uh, all these can enhance the military capability. And building the world-class training centers, these are important. India also faces a unique two-front war threat. One is from Pakistan, other is from China. China's President Xi Jinping has clearly stated yesterday that um, it will not even ready to lose an inch of land. So that is an indirect threat to all border nations which are having land disputes with uh, China. So here, the China has created theater commands. India also has started experimenting with the theater commands. The objective of this is to bring in greater coordination between all the three armored forces. So here, India need to develop a modern indigenous military industrial complex to facilitate effective engagement of the theater commands. You know that after Saudi Arabia, we are the largest country which is importing the arms. So, if we can create a military industrial complex in this country, definitely we can create employment and also we can become an arms exporting nation rather than an importing nation. So again, our border protection is under the control of Ministry of Home Affairs. Border security forces, ITBP, Sahastra Seema Bal, all these are paramilitary forces which are under the control of the Home Ministry. So that's why the greater coordination is expected between um, Home Ministry and the Defence Ministry. And in the Defence Ministry, a greater understanding is necessary between civilians and military administrators. Um, these will make our machine a fighting fit organisation. That is the essence of this. First step in a long journey. It is about National Medical Commission Bill. So before going into that, remember two major problems of India. One is rural urban deficit in the case of healthcare services. And the second thing is lack of sufficient human or manpower in healthcare services. Or I will put it as qualified manpower. So in improving this, there are two major recommendations in this bill. One is quality standards in the medical schools will be monitored. And medical schools will be regulated for the fees and other measures. And second, the rural urban divide will be arrested by converting the sub-centers into wellness centers by 2022. And added to that, Ayush doctors will be inducted into allopathy through a bridge course. So, these two initiatives are expected to change the health care on the rural front. And it also tries to modernize the community health centers which are going to be the first phase of the specialists in India. So, there are certain positive steps under the National Medical Commission Bill and the Doctors Medical Council of India better do not oppose to this. That is what it puts it as. So, Medical Council of India has its own objections to it because the new regulatory body is going to consist of appointed individuals rather than professionally elected individuals. 
And the second, bringing the OUH doctors into the PHCs and subcenters is also objected by MBBS doctors, allopathic doctors, for the reason that it is offering the subquality care to the rural Indians. So I can put it as this way, it is better to offer some care rather than offering no care saying that quality care has to be available to them. That's how I can put it as. In China, the barefoot doctors is a successful example. Anywhere, some basic diseases, the disease burden of India is majorly related to communicable diseases and also the lifestyle diseases. Tuberculosis and malaria, these two can be arrested, many deaths can be saved, many of the lives can be saved. And second, the lifestyle diseases are increasing and a kind of preventive educational approach is necessary. So health education for that we don't need an allopathic doctor. Any doctor who is qualified and able to understand a disease is more than sufficient. So he has to better understand pathology and pathogenesis rather than pharmacology to treat a patient. That's how I can put it as. Bending the rules. You know, the neutrino observatory is supposed to come up in Thani Hills in Tamil Nadu. But however, there were some issues. Because it was close to a national park, that is Matikatan Shola Park in Kerala, Idukki district I think, Shola Park in Kerala. It is part of the biodiversity hotspot. So, environmental impact assessment has to be conducted. So, in this, what the government did is, instead of considering in under category a, it has considered that un, under category B. It means that it can it has bypassed prior environmental clearance from Ministry of Environment and Forests. So it may be a national project, it may be important to science, but bending the rules by the government itself is not a correct precedent. That's what this article emphasizes on. Here, try to understand what is environmental impact assessment. What is the difference between proj I mean, category A, category B sites, etc. And second, National Green Tribunal and its composition tries to go through that. Neutrinos, previously there was a question, please go through it. And towards 2019, it is more about politics. I'm not going to deal with it and we dealt with the issues enough. Time to move beyond subsidies. Now, to promote exports, what we shall do? Do we need to teach fish or do we need to give fish? The subsidies are more kind of giving fish to the exporters rather than teaching to fish. So in this case, either export subsidies have to be encouraged or do we need to go long term sustainable export promotion measures such as trade facilitation measures, building the trade infrastructure in the country. If you observe, in India, most of the money is being spent on export subsidies rather than trade infrastructure. This is making our exports indirectly non-competitive. So today, at WTO, so we are, uh, that is section 7 category. It means we are a developing country and we can have certain relaxations with regard to safeguard, with regard to export subsidies are concerned. So that is called NX7 list. So in this NX7 list, any developing country having per capita incomes less than 1000 per annum for three consecutive years can claim the benefit of export subsidies. So this is what is called as special and differential treatment. So in this context, India has crossed this $1000 mark recently. So it means it is supposed to stop export benefits. But government of India has in turn moved forward with it. So here, US is pulling India to the courts. And added to that, if you take textiles, India has crossed the 3% mark and it is a significant exporter. So that's why any subsidies to the textile sector are also supposed to be withdrawn as per WTO norms. And though government of India asking for relaxation, remember on the other side of the coin, it is the time we shift our strategy to promote our exports on a long term basis rather than still giving them steroids through subsidies. That is the important thing which you need to carry forward. A move to equivalence. Now, I'll put it as this way. If you are Harvard educated and you are a specialist, if you come to India, probably the degree will not be recognized. It means you shall be treated as a basic, edu a basic uh, uh, person who has educated up to degree in India. 
because your post graduation degrees are not been recognized there is no dual re degree recognition agreement so india and france have come to such an agreement uh, where the degrees issued by the uh, french universities will be recognized by india and vice versa so if india is able to make similar kind of agreements with other european countries um, so the globally educated indians can come back uh, pursue their research interests or academic interests in this country it can help us to create a reverse brain drain situation that's how this article emphasizes treaty that backfired so you know that after bangladesh war so we have got 93000 prisoners of war so these are under the control of india and bangladesh command so bangladesh wanted pakistan to recognize bangladesh to release these prisoners india had three other objectives one is the pakistan shall not make kashmir an international issue eliminate the third party from discussions and pakistan has to recognize change in power balance between the countries so these two have to be achieved without much pain to pakistan so that a kind of attitude of revenge comes in so india appears to have failed on this front in achieving these three objectives the reasons are two one is zulfikar ali bhutto who has visited india for shimla agreement soon was taken over by a military regime so the military regime has killed the bhutto and second is the nuclear ex nuclear bomb which is tested by pakistan it has brought the parity with india so the traditional advantage india had the traditional balance power of india with pakistan got disturbed so because of this what we can state is the treaty did not yield the intended objectives for india and third protesting mps against stall debate on no trust motion today disruptions are more common than discussions so the parliament shall be a body of debate the contestation of ideas thoughts expression of grievances of the people that's how the representative democracy has to work so if you see the disruptions they are becoming more an order of day so that shows clearly lack of accommodation of stand of different viewpoints so in this scenario this budget session has totally got evaporated without any discussion because of the no confidence motion introduced by tdp and kaveri management management board demand from aia dmk and reservations for minorities in uh, telangana by trs because of these three demands entire session got vanished and the next is center plans law on online hate speech what is this online hate speech is about so today lot of hatred is growing with regard to social media yesterday snowden has made one important remark so the social media is another form of surveillance in a different shape and structure so that is the online hate speech is growing in india so the further that there will be a law which will be prohibiting this very soon that's what this article talks about and then rohingya crisis so these rohingyas are muslims living in rakhine state in myanmar and myanmar as a state did not recognize them as their citizens and claims that these are the economic immigrants from bangladesh and these people fearing uh, retribution from the majority over there they are fleeing to india bangladesh majorly so in this context uh, india do not want to accept rohingyas as uh, refugees so the situation is alarming in bangladesh and you know that bangladesh is prone to floods in the coming rainy seasons so in such a scenario how this humanitarian crisis has to be avoided that is a big question before the countries judge appoint hindu malhotra regimes practice so this clearly exposes though she was mentioned by the collegium as a judge she but the government did not clear the file at what is the major reason for this memorandum of procedure so there is no agreement between the government and the judiciary on the memorandum of procedure that has to be followed for the appointment of judges to supreme court and high courts so that's why the indu malhotra she has resumed her practice remember her she is the first woman who is directly selected from the bar to the judge uh, as the judge of the supreme court that is the point important 
In the last page, I gave you the notes that will be available to you at lyx.in slash civilsprep. Thank you very much and all the best.